<clears throat> there's two different stories. You know, the uh, the one actually, you might I, the one you might be referencing. Uh, it was this guy, <laughs> this guy down in Guatemala. Um, great guy. You know, I, I used to take high school kids down to Guatemala all the time, <clears throat> and uh, we would go down uh, work with the God's Child Project, and 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 we build homes for people. Um, the God's Child Project wasn't really all that Catholic. It was at the beginning, and then it kind of kind of switch but it was good for the kids because they got you know like it could be as catholic as i made it because i was kind of in charge of the whole trip so we had mass every day we went to orphanages and we built homes and we did all this stuff and we uh one one night we went to this uh this homeless shelter and we we went every year and it was it was a really weird place like they would they would check their knives their drugs their guns at the door and then they could come in and spend the night and have a nice meal and sleep um, and so we went in there and yeah, there was this one guy in there and we met him every year and every year he told us all these stories, you know, one year he was with the coast guard. Um, this is a, a Guatemalan, right? Worked for the U S coast guard. So that's clearly untrue. Uh, the one year he was a Navy seal at one point, he was a green beret at one point, <laughs> his story just kept changing. And, and, uh, I kind of, you know, I talked to the guys and I was like, what's going on with this guy? And he's like, well, he's just, you know, he's an alcoholic, he's drugs, um, you know, he's abandoned his family, whatever, and he's just been here for whatever, five years. So one year, uh, we were down there, and my buddy Doug, he's like, he's like, hey, and he was talking to him, he's like, you want, you, you should pray over him. And I'm like, okay, I got no problem praying over people. So I'm like, I'm praying over this guy, and I'm like, I'm like, Lord, you know, we ask for deliverance and that, you, you know, for your beloved son. And if there's any spirits of, you know, alcoholism or drugs or whatever, I'm like, in the name of Jesus, be gone from this man. And all of a sudden, this dude went ballistic. Like, and he was a little guy, you know, and my buddy Doug's a pretty freaking big guy. And he's like grabbing him. And he's like, this guy's coming at me like, scream. and this was the nicest, you know, little calm guy that always made jokes. And he just flipped and he's like screaming and. And Doug is in the middle, like he's got, he's holding them on this side. And he's got me on this side, trying to hold us apart. And I'm looking at him and Doug's like, finish the prayer. You know, <laughs> like, so I finish and I keep praying over the guy. And I'm like, just, I don't know, in the name of Jesus, casting out whatever's in this dude. And all of a sudden he just like, it just stops. He just like drops and he's on the ground. He's like this ghostly pale white. And I, I mean, he looked dead and I'm like, oh no, you know, like I killed him. <laughs> Like or Jesus killed him, I don't know, whatever. But you know, he's laying on the ground, and 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 then all of a sudden, he kind of like comes to, and you know, where like, he doesn't know where really where he is, and and uh, anyway, so that was kind of like the ordeal. Well, then the next year when we came back, he wasn't there, and uh, I talked to the the guys that were there, and I'm like, you know, hey, where is this guy? And they're like, yeah, man. He's like, after you guys prayed with him, like he cleaned up his life. Uh, went back to his family. So he's back with his family. He's free of alcohol, free of drugs. You know, it's been over a year. And uh, so, yeah, he's just totally set free, you know? So I don't know, you know, it's power of Jesus's name in one aspect. Uh, but the other one, the other one was when we were, it was, was here in, in the Bismarck Mandan area. And I was writing my homily one night and this person came down the hallway. They're like, Hey father, uh, just let you know if you hear anything like we're going to be in this room and we're going to be uh, doing an, uh, a deliverance. We're doing deliverance ministry. I'm like, oh, OK, whatever. So I'm like typing my homily, you know, working on my office. And all of a sudden, like I hear the most like blood curdling screams and howls and voices. And I'm like, you know, I'm like typing. I'm like, at one point, I'm like, well, what? you can't write a homily well that's going on you know so i'm like sitting there trying to like i don't know like get focused and all of a sudden the door like flies open and this person's like like just you know sweating and they're like we need your help and i'm like with what and they're like we have a, an exorcism going on i'm like oh shoot like okay like and i'm like okay you know so like they take me down and i walk in and there's like there's four guys that are on top of this like kind of holding this woman down this woman I don't know. She's probably 60 something and like maybe <laughs> like five, two, five, three, 120 pounds. I mean, this is not a big person. 
and I'm like getting down and I like get behind her and I get her like, so I'm like doing like a full Nelson on her, like just holding her like that. Cause she's screaming like these guttural screams and like multiple voices at the same time. Really weird, like different octaves of, of, of vocal dynamic, I guess, uh, you know, screaming, growling, whatever. And like, I'm just hanging on with all of my might and like, she gets loose at one point and grabs this guy on like the toilet under and just was like, boom. like, I mean, this dude flies like three feet, four feet backward. And I'm like, there's no way this little old woman could pick up a grown man and throw him, you know? And so I'm like, we're dealing with something really, really, you know, supernatural here. And, you know, everybody's like, they always want to hear these stories, especially when I teach a confirmation or the high school, they always want to hear about the devil. And I'm like, you guys, like that entire time that I was in that um, exorcism, it was not, it was not fun. There's nothing fun about it. And that's what I hate about, you know, scary movies and all that stuff. It, it's like this pop. So you, you want to be scared and, you, and, you, and because you know, you're going to be safe. You know, and with the devil, it's, there's nothing scary about the devil. Um, he's just incredibly miserable and, uh, and sad and, you know, deprived of goodness and despairing. And like, I, I don't, I don't know how to really capture like how dark and without joy this person was like, it was not scary. I was not scared the entire time. I was brought to tears numerous times because this poor little woman was just possessed by this malicious thing that, hated her and hated me and hated itself like um but yeah anyway so at one point as the exorcist is praying the prayer she like wrenches backwards like i mean this is like a contortion i've never seen like it was like should have broke stuff and and started coughing like uncontrollably and like as she coughed like the whole room smelled like alcohol and I'm like, what the heck is that? And and the exorcist, he's like, that's the we just do, he's like we just expelled the demon of alcoholism, uh, which was rampant in her life. So then, anyway, so this went on for like an hour. Uh, the next, give me an idea of like the the power and the strength. When I woke up the next day, so from here to here, here to here, I was black and blue, because that's how hard I was I was holding on, <clears throat> um, and. Yeah, you know, I didn't hear anything from her or anything else because I wasn't on the Exodus team or anything. I just got pulled in for that one. Well, like a year or two years later, I don't know what it was. I'm in, I'm in the supermarket and I see her. So she's checking out and I'm checking out and she like looks back and she looks at me and she kind of smiles and I'm like, oh no, like, <laughs> like reparation for beating the death or whatever, but so like, and she's like, I'm like, and I look at her kind of, I must've got like wide eyed and she's like, father. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, I'm healed. And I'm like, no way. You know, like, it was just this really beautiful moment um, that she had been healed from. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's real. It's really real. And I've had several experiences of it. And uh, yeah, I just, I, 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 I this, this, you know, we say that we say that evil is a privation of good. What that means is it's, it's a lacking of good. It takes a good thing. It's like a parasite. It latches onto it and it makes it less good. So the demonic, the devil himself, they're they're so deprived of goodness that they're almost nothing. You know, if you ever read, if you ever read uh, C.S. Lewis, The Great Divorce, there's this great point when he's when he's they're in this huge area, you know. And, this massive in the the kingdom up in the mountains. And it's kind of like, you know, depending on how you read, it, it's like purgatory, you know, is where they're at. And they're like, and they had come from this dark town, right? Which is seemingly hell. And the, and the man, the soul that's there, he's like, it's this expanse, super expansive town, right? It goes out forever. And then when they take this bus and people probably don't know what the hell I'm talking about now, but if you read the book, you'll know it. He takes this bus and he gets up and it gets brighter and brighter. And then they're kind of in this, this place but he talks to an angel at the end of this thing and he says he's like so if that's if the mountains are the celestial city or the heavenly kingdom he's like where did we come from before we got here and the angel points at a crack in the ground 
like a little crack. And he's like, there. Because hell is almost so much, it, it's so much of like nothing. We don't, we don't realize how expansive heaven is, how expansive um, the joy of Christianity is, and how deprived evil is of goodness. Um, and that's why people, as they get deeper and deeper and deeper into sin, they experience less and less and less joy because they're approaching nothingness. And they, and they also experience less and less meaning because they're approaching nothingness. That's why what, you know, Paul says the wages of sin is death. I mean, he means, he's talking about spiritual death for sure, but then it's going to be physical death. You know, once you lose a meaning to live, like, you don't want to live anymore. So, yeah.